Welcome to MAKE, a course taught at the University of South Florida. This tutorial discusses controlling stepper motors with the Arduino. We will learn about stepper motor hardware, drivers and how to drive steppers with the Arduino. Here we see a schematic of a 5-wire stepper motor. Like any electrical motor we have a stator and a rotor. On the stator we have four electromagnets and each of these electromagnets has a pole piece that has teeth. These teeth on the pole piece, their pitch is matched by the teeth on the rotor. This matching pitch allows to generate a torque that drives the rotor into alignment with the stator. We see that down here. The force is strongest between the protruding parts of the stator and the rotor. So once we turn on the electrical field in a in a magnet in the stator, then the rotor is being pulled into alignment. Now the trick to turn this alignment into a stepwise rotation of the rotor is by aligning the magnets on the stator in a way that each of them is a quarter tooth distance, a quarter pitch off relative to each other. This misalignment allows to pull the rotor a quarter tooth distance forward if we apply the magnetic fields to the next magnet. So one sequence of turning on the magnetic field around the stator actually pulls the rotor forward by one tooth. So if we have 25 teeth on the rotor, it would take 100 steps for one full rotation of the rotor. Let's look at the animation at Wikipedia. Here you see each of the magnets is turned on briefly in sequence and every time we do that the rotor ticks forward by a quarter tooth distance. So once we go one, two, three, four, we basically moved the rotor by one tooth distance. So to drive the motor all we have to do is turn on and off the current in these coils. Now if we want to do that with digital signals uh, we have to use transistors in order to provide the current. Motors usually draw a lot of current and so the Arduino digital pins are not able to provide the current. The stepper motor shield that comes with the Arduino kit uses a transistor array, it's a Darlington transistor array, it's this chip that's on the shield and uh, in this uh, chip we have a series of transistors and the bases of these transistors they are hooked up to Arduino digital pins uh, via a resistor to um, reduce the current that goes from base to emitter. Now the collectors they are um, at the output of this chip and they are directly connected to the motor windings. Um, the other ends of the motor windings they are connected to 5 volts through the contact that is labeled COM on the uh, chip. So whenever the transistor turns on by pulling it high uh, with the Arduino pin um, at the base, then uh, a current is flowing from 5 volts through the winding to a uh, ground. You probably wondered why there are diodes um, in parallel to the motor windings. These diodes are integrated on the chip. These diodes, uh, they serve to short circuit the voltage spike uh, whenever the coil is turned off because the magnetic field breaks down after turning off the current. Um, this produces a strong voltage spike that can be fairly high in voltage and that has the potential to uh, destroy the uh, transistor. So these diodes, they short circuit the current so it only flows internally here and doesn't uh, reach the uh, transistor. Here you see the circuit of the uh, stepper motor shield that uh, comes with the Arduino kit. Down here is a, a photo of the uh, shield. These are the pins, uh, these are the, this is the connector that connects to the Arduino pins. You can directly stick it into the uh, female headers that are on the Arduino board. Um, this connector uh, fits the uh, connector that's on the stepper motor. Then we have four LEDs that essentially flash whenever we turn on one of the coils 
and if you want to supply external uh, an external power supply you can actually pull off a, a jumper here and then connect that power supply that's important if you would run more than one motor with the Arduino here's the circuit I made it with uh, EE schema in KiCad uh, this is the uh, the transistor array chip here is the uh, connector to the Arduino this is the connector to the motor these are the four LEDs and the resistors that limit the current down here is a schematic of the motor, um, four coils. Uh, all coils are connected to the red wire on one end, right? So this is the wire that uh, goes to that COM connector on the chip, connected to five volts. The other ends of the coils are individually connected to the outputs of the uh, transistor array, right, with blue, pink, orange, yellow and that comes in here through the connector to the motor and then it connects to the outputs of the chip and so whenever we pull a pin high um, on the Arduino we turn on the transistor here at the output and then we sync current from 5 volts through the inductor and then into the transistor and to ground so at the same time what happens is um, we also uh, sync current through the LEDs, which are also hooked up to 5 volts on their um, anode end via resistors. So every time we fire up a coil, the LED comes on and current is flowing through the inductor. Here you can see my setup. Um, this here connects directly to 5 volts and uh, a ground on the, on the Arduino board. And then I stuck the uh, shield here directly uh, into the uh, female headers on the uh, Arduino board uh, with pins, uh, two, two pins 8, 9, 10 and 11. And here you see the uh, plug from the motor that is plugged in. It only goes, way, uh, goes in, in in one way. Here's a detailed shot how I put the um, uh, uh, pin connectors on the shields directly into the um, headers on the Arduino board. Here we see the setup in action. I uh, slowed down the sketch considerably that the motor is only moving very slowly so we can see how the LEDs turn on in sequence. See 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and the motor is very slowly uh, turning down here. And here at full speed The motor is just moving forwards and backwards and we hardly see the LEDs flash. Let's have a look at the Arduino code. First we start out with uh, pre-compile statements. We define um, the four pin numbers that uh, uh, control the uh, coils of the stepper motor. Then we define a delay time. With this we can uh, regulate the speed of the stepper motor. It turns out that the delay time of 8 is about as fast as it can go. If um, one enters smaller uh, numbers here then the stepper motor uh, misses uh, steps it seems. Okay, in the setup function all we do is we set the four pins that we just defined up there to as outputs. In the main loop we define a number of steps and then we turn all the coils off to have a clean start and then we use a while loop where we uh, count down the, the number of steps uh, down to zero and um, every time we do one step we use a function that moves the motor forward and here now we uh, count down the number of steps by one. Then we wait for 2 seconds, 2000 milliseconds, and then we do the same just in backward direction. So the motor goes, uh, goes 48 steps forward and 48 steps backward. Let's have a look at these functions that we just called here. First we have four functions that define steps A, B, C and D. So the four steps uh, to put the uh, stepper motor one uh, tooth forward. And so you see here that in step A we turn pin 1 high, in step B we turn pin 2 high and the other ones are low, and in step C we turn pin 3 high and in step D we turn pin uh, 4 high. So in the, uh, in the two um, functions that pull the motor forward and backward, all we have to do is call these four 
uh, step functions now in sequence. So forward is A, B, C, D, and in between we always wait for, wait for that delay time that uh, we defined here in the, uh, in the main tab. Okay, and when we go backward, then we call the steps in the reverse uh, direction, D, C, B, A. So far we only considered the uh, full step mode. Full step mode means that every time we only turn on one electromagnet and every time we switch to the next one we pull the uh, rotor by one quarter tooth uh, pitch distance forward. Now if you imagine if we would turn on not only this one but also this one then we would be able to turn the rotor by only one eighth of a, a tooth pitch because we would have the same force here between the teeth and and here and so the rotor would have to go in between these two positions. So by doing so uh, we are able to turn the rotor only by an eighth and that allows us to go into what's what is called half step mode. Now when you use two electromagnets at the same time you also get a higher torque. If we do just that then we can still have a full step mode with a much higher torque. This is summarized here. Here we see the original full step mode, so one magnet at a time. And this here is the high torque mode, so we have two magnets at a time that pull the uh, uh, rotor around, but we still have the same uh, uh, step pitch like with the full step mode. Um, then down here in these eight um, uh, images we see the half step mode. So here we really get a better resolution. So we switch here between the regular full step and the high torque mode. With this we move the rotor every time only one eighth of a position. It is clear if you look at this that the torque here is actually varying. Here we have a high torque moment and then uh, this step here has a lower torque. It is possible to go to even smaller uh, step widths. Uh, that is called micro stepping and that is achieved by using pulse width modulation for the uh, current that goes into the, um, the magnet. By doing so, by, by changing the uh, pulse width, uh, we can fine-tune the magnetic forces and so you can imagine if we have two uh, magnets on, we can pull this rotor a little bit further to this one or a little bit further to this one depending on whether we give more pulse widths here or, uh, and less pulse widths here or the other way around. Now it is time for the in-class project. In this project uh, you will focus on the exploration of the different stepper modes. This will be done by simply modifying the uh, tutorial sketch. Uh, so just um, uh, enter uh, different uh, uh, magnet sequences into the uh, functions and see if you can get it to run in, in high torque or uh, hi half step mode. The second part of the in-class project is using the uh, stepper library. Now the stepper library that comes with the Arduino uh, IDE is unfortunately not suitable for this motor uh, that is included with the Arduino kit. For some reason it is not able to reverse the direction of this motor. And so what we did is we modified the uh, original library of the Arduino and we call it now stepper AK, so that's what you need to include and we put in the uh, motor firing sequences that we used in the tutorial sketch. Now all the uh, methods they still have the same names and uh, uh, so you should be able to use Arduino code snippets for stepper motors uh, uh, that you may find online just by uh, changing the include uh, statement. This concludes our tutorial controlling stepper motors with the Arduino. Thanks for watching.